Hey campers, George here. Yep, in the man cave again. Uh, just doing some chores on my equipment. Just adding a so you can find me tag on my new steel folding saw. I do that on all my stuff. So if I drop it or put it somewhere I can't remember, it's easy to find. Titan paracord. Really nice paracord and I use it a lot, just about on everything. If you look uh, at my cutters up there, you can see they've all got the tags on them. It's just something I like to do uh, at my age. <laughs> I put things down, I can't remember where I put them. So that just makes it easier for me to find them. But I digress. The main reason for this video, as you saw in the introduction, I've been looking at that 10 C's of survivability list again. It's a list I go back to, I look at, think about fairly often. I think it's a great list. It really, for me personally, uh, helps me prepare myself when I go camping. As you know, I camp a lot on my own. I've got to be careful out there. If something happens, I've got to know that I can get home. So I look at that list a lot. And just doing these cord things on my my cutters and, and all that good stuff got me thinking about number five on that list, which is cordage. You know, I've, I've always been a, a big paracord guy, 550 cord, whatever you want to call it. Now, I know it as paracord just from my military days. Uh, we always refer to it as paracord. I've been seeing a lot and reading a lot about this stuff, bank line. A lot of people actually prefer this to paracord for a couple of reasons. The main one being is it's small, it's lightweight, and you can keep a bunch of it in a small place in any of your kits. If you have a survival kit, possibles pouch, your things bag, whatever you want to call it, this doesn't take up a lot of room. You know, this roll here cost me 20 bucks. And I believe, if I remember, 395 feet. <laughs> That's going to last me a while. But I know nothing about it, except what I've read. And I wanted to have a closer look at it and find out a little bit more about it. And the first thing I noticed was there's a ton of different kinds. You can get the good stuff and you can get the bad stuff. Now, this, this roll of uh, bank line I actually got from Ironclad. Bankline and Bankline comes in two different styles basically twisted or braided, and there's advantages to both. The twisted obviously allows you to untwist the strands, and if you look on the end here, it doesn't come apart easily because of the tar, and the tar keeps everything together. Now, the amazing thing about it, you'd think tar. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> they put just enough on there where it doesn't make a mess. It's not going to rub off on your hands. It's not going to get on any of your clothes, on any of your equipment. It's just enough to hold it together to allow better grip. And that's the thing about it. And if you look here, if you look really carefully, if you can see there, um, you can see right there, three strands. And, you know, it's made up of three strands. It's twisted, so it's easy to take apart. Now, the braided is different. It's actually braided. It's not stranded. And because of that, it's not easy to take apart. Now, the, there's a, advantages and disadvantages. You don't want this happening to your line, coming apart like this. And if it's braided, that ain't going to happen. And if you have to take it apart, you're going to have to have some patience. It's pretty quick you on the twisted. And that was my choice to get the twisted simply because the reason is I've got three strands here. Now, how strong they are, I don't know. We can have a look-see. And I believe they're about a 30 pounds per strand, which is not bad. That gives you a, a tensile strength on, on the bank line of about... 100 pounds max. This is size 12. Now, looking at this little cheat sheet here, 
there's a bunch of different sizes. Anything from 6 through to 120. There's a lot. This is a 12. And on the 12, the tensile strength is 100. But interestingly enough, they say there is a warning on here. And it says, uh, warning not to be used in safety applications. Well, you know, I'm not going to use this to you know, climb down a cliff or anything like that. This is simply for camping. You know, there's a lot of different uses for it. You, you know, you're not going to put it on your hammock. It's not going to hold your hammock. It's only a 100 pounds breaking strain unless you weigh 50 pounds soaking wet. I wouldn't recommend it. So, you know, that's where paracord has its advantage over this. It's limited on its weight that it can handle. But it's pretty cool, i got to tell you. And what I want to do for me, I want to make sure that I can do the knots that I need to use this for. That's my biggest concern. And, you know, the fact that it can be really lightweight, you can get a bunch of it, in a small area, and it's not going to take up any room. So that's why I'm looking at it. Just about every manufacturer who makes bank line will all say that fishing, hunting, camping, this is the stuff you need to use. Obviously, originally, it was made for fishing, uh, fishing nets, or to make a drop line where you can have a bunch of hooks and you just throw it out there. I forget the, the correct term for that. But they would use it for that, for like a catfish line. They'd just have all these lines hanging off with a hook on and bait. And they just throw it out there and leave it there. And the catfish come, get snagged. You come back in the morning and you pull your bank line in. And you've got a bunch of fish on the end of it. So that's really uh, what it was designed for. Fixing the big fishing nets and things like that. It's made from 100% nylon. Okay. And it's covered with a thick coating. They say a thick coating of tar. It's not what I imagine a thick coating to be, but I mean, for its, you know, for its application, it's probably a thick coating of tar. What that does is it protects it from the elements. Abrasion, oil, gasoline, UV, UV light, moisture, and most chemicals won't affect it because of the tar coating. So it has some real advantages. It's going to last and it can take a lot of abuse. One thing I did learn, you've got to be careful what you buy. Obviously, not all bank line is as good as other bank line. Here's a perfect example. And the reason I got this was it got some really good reviews. If you look at that, look at that. It's almost stiff. It doesn't flop down like a piece of string. Now, if you get some bank line does that, and that's not very good, what's going to happen is the ends are going to fray because there's not enough tar to hold it together. Be aware that when you're purchasing bank line, there's different kinds from different manufacturers. Make sure you, you really look into it and make sure you're getting some good stuff. You know, I got this from Ironclad simply because the reviews on it were, were really good. So I, you know, and from what I'm seeing is you can see there it's, it's nice and stiff. It doesn't flop down. So that's something you need to consider when looking at bank line. I just want to do a quick test on it. If you watch my This Is How I Hammock Camp, you will you see that I talked about a prusset knot. That's my favorite knot. I, I use it whenever I can. One thing about prusset knots is they designed that the actual knot, whatever cordage you're using for the knot for the prusset, is that it be smaller than what you're attaching it to. So I'm going to use some 550 cord here uh, from Titan. If you cut your cord, you want to make sure that you just burn it off here and it won't fray out and things. I'm going to put a prusik knot on here. And you know how that goes. It goes through the loop twice. And then you pull it tight and push it together. And there you can see the prusik knot there. See it? It's sitting just like that. Well, it's, oh, it slides. Look at that. So that part works. Now, if I pull it from the side, oh yeah, it works. 
So it really does latch down on it. The tar really helps keep the knot together. So there's an advantage right there. And I can see why people like this. So I just wanted to take a quick moment with you and, and just talk about the 10 C's of survivability list. Like I said, cordage is number five. I'm thinking of just covering that as a, uh, a playlist on my channel just to have the 10 CCs and to do some dirt time and that sort of thing on each one. Cordage, I thought was, huh, wow. I didn't think it was that important. And then I started looking at my kits. Everything on my kits relies on cordage. I rely on cordage right there. This is obviously 550 or all my cutters have it. Not just paracord and bank line. I'm talking about every kind of cordage you can think of. Here's an example. This is my shelf where I put a bunch of cooking stuff on. If you look carefully, cordage, 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 cordage. Not one of them is the same. Even on my packs, they come from the manufacturer and there's cordage everywhere. Your zip pull, this elastic, very common on a backpack. Every backpack has cordage on it. This cordage here I see a lot of. Is it 550? I don't know. I don't think so. But you see it a lot on packs. What I'm, I'm trying to say is that cordage isn't just 550 cord or bank line. There's hundreds of different kinds of cordage out for different applications. And there's a lot of things that come in play when choosing that cordage. When I'm out looking for cordage, I'm like, ooh, do I want to spend 30 bucks on some paracord that's rated at, I don't know, 750 pounds? Yeah. Yes, I'm right here. You can see right there. 750 pounds. Do I need that? Not really. But a hunter might. You know, he goes out and he shoots himself a nice buck. Drag it up a gully or something. This is going to be real handy to have to get it up that gully. It's application. Be a little bit more open when it comes to cordage. Certainly on the 10 C's list is that they're not specific. Why I like that list. And one of the reasons is it's not specific. He says you need cordage. Choose your own. You just need to choose one that works for you. Price, value, strength, what are you going to use it for? Will it meet all those factors? I'm just talking about Bankline because I've heard so much about it. I had never owned it. I've got some now. Well, not some. I've got a lot right now. For me, the big adv advantage to this I'm looking at is building a shelter. This stuff's going to work great tying wood together. You know, when you're done with it, it's not going to kill you to just take that stuff, cut it up, put it in your pocket, take it out and throw it away. You won't do that with paracord. I'm living proof. I can't throw my paracord away. That's my views on cordage on the 10 cc's list. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. And I'm pretty sure, no, I know I'm going to be back with something else from the 10 C's list. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How about what you can use cordage for or what you use cordage for? Just saying. Thanks for watching. Bye.